a large black bird. With a pouch like that of a pelican, but of a bright red color, was very remarkable. As it hovered or darted, the bright verdure at a distance looked handsome, but when seen close, it at once descended to the level of a carrion eating cumarant or buzzard. <laughs> Never, I believe, did a vessel leave England better provided or fitted with the service she was destined to perform, and for the health and comfort of her crew, than the Beagle. If we did want anything which could have been carried, it was our own fault, for all that was asked for from the dockyard, navy board, or admiralty was granted. Anxious that no opportunity of collecting useful information during the voyage should be lost, I proposed to the hydrographer, Captain Francis Beaufort, that some well-educated and scientific person should be sought who would willingly share such accommodations as I had to offer in order to profit by the opportunity of visiting distant countries yet little known. Captain Beaufort approved of the suggestion, and he named Mr. Charles Darwin. I feel that the opportunities which I enjoyed of studying the natural history of the different countries we visited, vessels in the offing and distant land looming much, a few mottled hard edge clouds appearing in the east, streaks across the sky, have been wholly due to the Captain Fitzroy. I hope I may be here permitted to express my gratitude to him. And the smoke from chimneys rising high into the air, and then going westward, were the signs which assured us of a favorable wind. And to add that during the five years we were together, I received from him the most cordial friendship and steady assistance. A light cat's paw rippled the water. We made all sail, the breeze increased, and at noon our little vessel was outside the breakwater with a fresh easterly wind. Captain Fitzroy is everything that is delightful. If I were to praise him half so much as I feel inclined, you would say it was absurd. <coughs> While our party were scrambling over the rock, a determined struggle was going on in the water between the boat's crews and sharks. A number of fine fish, like the groupers of the Bermuda Islands, bit eagerly at baited hooks put overboard by the men, but as soon as a fish was caught, a rush of voracious sharks was made at him. And notwithstanding blows of oars and boat hooks, the ravenous monsters could not be deterred from seizing and taking away more than half the fish that were hooked. As the moon rose and the breeze decreased, the contrast of light and darkness, of swift change of place and apparent tranquility, lost their effect. I never knew in my life so mixed a character. Always much to love. And I once loved him sincerely, but so bad a temper, and so given to take offense that I gradually quite lost my love, and wished only to keep out of contact with him. Thank you.